So, Craig, the Panthers take a stranglehold in this series with the comeback win in Game 4. But, of course, it's not without controversy. The Bruins <laughs> did challenge the Panthers' second goal scored by none other than Sam Bennett for goaltender interference. The call stood. What did you think of that sequence? Okay, so, so let's go through the sequence. There is no way that Jim Montgomery cannot not challenge this call. He has to challenge it. If he doesn't challenge it, he'll be crucified. Now we go to the second part where you can see where Sam Bennett's trying to give himself some room. He gives Charlie Coyle a push and that push gets Charlie Coyle right into the lap of Jeremy Swayman. Now the third part of it and, uh, and in my belief this is why hockey ops said this goal would stand. It's because you evaluate did the push on Charlie Coyle impede Jeremy Swayman from being able to make the save. I don't think it did. And I think that that was the position that hockey ops took. We can debate whether there should have been an interference penalty on Sam Bennett that was missed or a cross-checking penalty. But when you're challenging for goaltender interference, the essence of it is, was Jeremy Swayman impeded? And regardless of Charlie Cole going into Jeremy Swayman, I don't think it prevented him Sam Bennett was going to score that goal regardless. Is it, is, is it clear? Is it, is it certain? No, it isn't. And it's left up to hockey ops to make that decision. Jim Montgomery's not happy. Paul Maurice says goal stands. But I can understand why the goal stood. And you can understand why Boston Bruins fans are feeling that a call was missed. Because it very well could have been called interference on Sam Bennett. Well, and he seems to be further solidifying himself as a villain for Boston oh. <laughs> right now. Uh, but Florida will now head home with a chance to wrap up this series in five games. So, Craig, what do you think has been the biggest difference between these two clubs in this series? Well, I would start with game one. There was a malaise to the Florida Panthers, and the Boston Bruins took full advantage of it. Even through the first period of game two, the Florida Panthers were kind of like hanging in. They weren't really establishing any presence against the Boston Bruins. Well, since that point in time, we're looking at eight periods of domination by the Florida Panthers. Eight periods. This game would have been long over without the heroics of Jeremy Swayman. The four check of the Florida Panthers. There's no answer coming from the Boston Bruins. The Boston Bruins cannot establish any offensive zone time. The, when you think about a team being in full control, Sarah, that is where the Florida Panthers find themselves, in full control. And the Boston Bruins have no answers. They're not going to find answers. To me, I felt after game one, and, and, and then into game two, that if the Florida Panthers played like they did in game two, Boston couldn't beat them. Well, that's exactly how Florida's played for those last eight periods. I think this series ends in five games down in South Florida in game five. Well, the stats also support you, Craig, because the Panthers are perfect 3-0 all time when leading a series 3-1. Game five, Tuesday night in Florida. Thanks, Craig.